Good morning. Welcome to Nicholas Club Monterey. Today we're going to discuss the nine o'clock or sometimes referred to as position two. One of the things I want to emphasize during this series is that while we're working with static positions, we want to also acquire a certain movement of fluidity to these different positions. And as each position gets better and better, the next position is going to be easier for you to hit. So using your camera, make sure you have continuous movement while you're working on trying to hit these positions. The second thing I want to emphasize is that these are just suggestions. The camera can be used in endless ways. So let's get started. I'm working on the nine o'clock position with my Live View Golf camera. Some of the things I like to work on is as I set up to it and I pass through this startup position, I want to make sure that my shaft is parallel to my plane line. So as I turn here, you want to make sure that my shaft is parallel to that target line or plane line, not inside or outside. Now some of the great players like Ben Hogan, Sam Snead and the others, they were a little inside. I remember when I first witnessed Mark O'Mara getting his shaft parallel to the ground, I was wondering why is that? But some of the great players were inside in the old days. Today we have a lot of players emphasizing this. You'll see that Ricky Fowler, for example, he's constantly doing this, or Justin Rose. They're also making sure that the shaft is parallel on the downswing as well. But by them working on this nine o'clock, it gives them a reference point. And that's the whole point about this, is it gives them a reference point for that downswing because they don't want to get the club underneath and they don't want to get the club outside, but they want to be right on playing. The other thing that I want to monitor is my club face. And this is something that you'll see most tour pros will have the club face pointing straight up, but occasionally you'll see there's another school of thought which makes it match the spine angle. Either case, they work. It just depends on what you're looking for. So let's take a recording and let's review. Now I have my recording from the front view. Some of the things I'm looking for. Well, I'm gonna draw a line outside my right hip and outside my left hip. And as I slide my bar across, I wanna be sure that I'm getting nice stability in my hips up until nine o'clock. That's one of the things I see a lot of people do is they're moving their hips way too much too early. Again, we talked about the three wheels in the startup. We wanna get the club head moving quicker. So the other thing I'm looking for is making sure that I hinge those wrists getting the club head moving quicker because it has a further path to travel. The next thing I'm looking for is making sure that I open up the right shoulder and the right elbow is folding nicely under. Um, a lot of times I see people kind of get stuck this way instead of allowing the, the right arm to fold under. It's important so that we can get that elbow, it's a joint, so we want it to, to go up the plane. If we're this way, it limits our ability to stay on the plane. So. These are the th primary things I'm looking for. Stability in the legs, nice width while still hinging the golf club, and making sure I have the proper shoulder turn with the right elbow folding on plane. Let's get started with the downline view. After our front view, let's go ahead and work on the downline view. Now I have my downline view recording. I'm going to take a red line, put it through my shaft, representing my basic plane as I did in my startup. Then I'm going to take a rectangle, change it to the color green, put it through my club head to represent the proper path I want my club head to follow. I don't want it to go outside that channel or inside that channel. And I can do the same thing for my hands. I'm going to put it right through my path of my hands, making sure that they follow the proper path. I'm going to change it to a circle make it the color blue to represent the stationary head or stationary post. And I'm going to draw a line, the color green, right through my spine angle to make sure that I stay within my posture while I'm following this action. I come over to my slide bar and I go right up, making sure that again, that the club head stays within that green rectangle. My hands stay within that rectangle. My shaft is going right up the red line. And then note when I get to nine o'clock position, my club head is right in front of my hands and within that box 
of the, of the rectangle of the hands. And also I maintain my pelvic tilt, not coming out of posture, standing up or lowering my head or going forward. I wanna make sure that I'm maintaining good posture and that pelvic tilt. These are the things that are very valuable using the Live View Golf Camera from the Downline View. Thank you for joining us today and covering the nine o'clock position. Our next video will feature the midpoint backswing, sometimes referred to as position three. Look forward to seeing you.